Good evening. Tonight, um, or welcome to our Campfire Vespers. Tonight, we're going to share from our Good Enough devotional by Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie. And tonight, we're going to share Happy Enough. So, um, our icebreaker is to think about a time when you were really happy or a place that brings you a lot of happiness. Rich had something? I guess he does. Of course, being with my wife makes me happy. She's my favorite person to be with. And my favorite place to be is either in a trout stream or at Living Waters. And I've been able to have my favorite person with me at Living Waters on one year for Valentine's Day. Lisa and I went to Living Waters. And even though there was a blizzard, um, we had a good time. And we've gone fishing together many times on trout streams. So being in a place I like with the person I like the most has made me happy. Thanks. You know, I guess I thought there's, yeah, lots of places um, and times where I've been really happy. And I think, but what has made me, made those times um, the happiest is the people that I've been with during those times. Um, our scripture tonight is from Philippians um, 4, 11 through 13, and uh, Paul is writing to the people of Philippi. He says, and I'm not saying this because I feel neglected, for I have learned to be satisfied with what I have. I know what it is to be in need and what it is to have more than enough. I have learned this secret so that anywhere at any time I am content, whether I am full or hungry. Whether I have too much or too little, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. So when I think of the Apostle Paul, I think of a man who was raised in a home that had enough. He had a good education and I'm guessing had many things maybe that others didn't have. He seemed to, to grow up in a, in a good, stable home that had at least enough money. Um, for, for them to have a good life, um, or an easier life, I should say. Because, as Paul says, we need to be satisfied in all things. Um, and a good life isn't one that isn't about money. It's about other things. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he's happy. And, and he was happy that they, the people were able to show him love and care because they always hadn't been able to do that. But when they were able to, he wanted to write and say thank you. Um, he's, um, we think he was in jail during that time. And, um, and so he's saying, you know, but it doesn't matter. I'm satisfied no matter what. And, um, so think about yourself and maybe people, you know, how satisfied or happy, um, are you, or do you see other people? Um, it seems like in our society, there's a lot of times where people just aren't satisfied unless they're out doing something, you know, something to quote, make them happy or that they're getting new things like, you know, whether it's clothes or whatever, just having to have new things because that's what makes them happy. Um, Paul reminds us to be happy or satisfied no matter what, whether we have a lot of things or whether our house is empty, you know, um, whether we have, you know, really expensive food or just the basic food, that we're to be happy, satisfied in all things. So I'm going to read now from our devotion. Um, my grandpa's favorite place in the world was the Dead Sea. No, not that one. The Dead Sea of Canada. He was a down-home carpenter from the prairie, so the best he could afford was to drive to the western edge of the province of Saskatchewan to, the, to Manitou Lake, a mineral spring. In the day, he could defy gravity for hours and stretch his legs and arms out on the buoyant surface of the saltwater lake like a human balloon. Then, as the sun set, he would saunter over to the lakefront's dance, dance hall and fabulously, the fabulously named Dance Land. It was packed seven nights a week, and there, was my, and there my grandpa was able to feel the pull of the full orchestra playing and enjoying another gravity-defying experience a performance dance floor made in 1928 with horsehair pads placed under 
a shining maple floor. Uh, probably the only one left in the world. But in the middle of this nowhere, completely content, he didn't just dance all night long. He sailed. To be honest, that all sounds incredibly fun to me. But if I were to scan a top 100 things to do before you die list, and I doubt that driving to rural Saskatchewan and going swimming in salt and dancing on animal hair would appear. Not everyone's dream is dance land. In fact, our culture has become enamored with a narrow set of criteria what constitutes a big moment. Desire can feel like an endless hunger, but there's a feeling we get when we feel full. Contentment, and it's much harder to describe or explain. It's difficult to photograph the feeling you get looking out your window or the rush of satisfaction when you see a smiling face. Maybe you want to cherish the perfect cup of tea or get that amazing stretch after actually sleeping all night. Um, most of the big moments will not seem terribly important to anyone else. They might feel sort of awful at the time. The Apostle Paul, sitting in prison, had something rather shocking to say about being content. His friends in Philippi sent him a letter, sent him some gifts as he waited behind bars. But Paul made a point of letting them know that with or without their presence, hungry or full, in prison or free, in wealth or poverty, his contentedness remained. This helps to put the popular verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, in context. Paul isn't saying that he can move mountains or vanquish pain, but he can feel a kind of peace no matter the condition, good or bad, because of Christ's strength. Put in that luck, in that light, it's not heroic at all. It's more like settling into the moment. Paul learned to be content, but it had nothing to do with his self-sufficiency, sheer, sheer luck, satisfaction, or comfort. He couldn't have known, it, known if he would ever be free or how the story would turn out in the end. Rather, his contentment came from God's presence alone. All of us live inside the economy of desire. Frankly, who doesn't want to go to dance land? And there will be times that feel like an endless desert and times where we get to bob in the lake thinking about lunch. But the freedom is knowing that is in knowing that when it comes to desire, you don't have to free fall to the very bottom. In everything, if everything falls apart, you might, like Paul, feel something else entirely, contentment. You might feel strangely, weirdly okay. Sometimes we go to the Dead Sea, other times we're only in rural Saskatchewan. But the best life is the one we can actually have, where God promises that even if there's very little to go around, there will still be big moments that feel like enough. So where is your favorite place in the world? Life kind of shared um, the happy places for me or when I'm with people whom I love and can just share and laugh together and be in joy. But even in difficult times, there's this contentment in, in knowing that we're not alone and that we have people who we love around us to support us. Um, so I'm not sure that I have a particular place. It's more um, the people I'm with. So how has your faith helped you find happiness or contentment? I think um, I've always liked this scripture from Paul um, because it is a reminder that through Christ um, that that I'm good enough and I don't have to spend my life trying to, you know, I have to do this before I die or I'll never be happy or I have to have this and then I'll be happy um, because how many times do we find that and then we get that thing and we're not any happier. You know, like we have these things that we think will bring us contentment. And throughout my life, I've learned um, that it's much more fun and enjoyable in life to be content and satisfied. And that my faith in Jesus Christ is what brings me um, that contentment, that peace in my soul. So tonight, i um, like to share a song about being happy. And it was a Sunday school song way back whenever. Um... I'm in right, out right, 
up, right, down, right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, whoop, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and washed away my sin, I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. I don't know if you sang that, and then, of course, we get faster and faster, and you get all confused with your ups and downs, and it was a happy song to sing and made us all laugh and feel the joy of Christ in our lives. So let us pray. God, we come to you tonight. Some of us feeling the happiness in our souls and having had a great day and one of laughter and one of joy. And others are struggling. Have either maybe been frustrated and some unexpected surprises that weren't good. Um, sadness, loneliness, all kind of other feelings. And it's hard sometimes, God, to be satisfied in those moments when we just are feeling sad or depressed or just in need of a basic things, maybe money to put gas in our car, not sure where how we're going to pay our bills, relationships that have just aren't what they should be and what we want, maybe even relationships that are hurtful. But God, in the midst of all the things of our lives, we are reminded that you are present with us. You're holding on to us. You're leading us and guiding us and reminding us in all of that, that we are good enough, that you love us. Help us, God, to find your peace and contentment through you. We pray for those who are in need, for those who need healing. We pray for the violence around our, our world that there may be love instead of hate. We pray for all your people and lift them up and for our churches, God. Thank you, God, for the blessings of our lives and for walking this journey with us. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks, have a good night.